This is the BMW S1000RR, one of the most extreme bikes money can buy. More to the point, this is the M Sport version, so it's the most extreme version of one of the most extreme bikes money can buy. The M package gives the standard bike even more focus. It's lighter, has carbon wheels, a lighter M battery, M seat, M swing arm pivot, and professional riding modes designed to help it dominate the track. But today, we don't have a track. We have a town. Your traffic, and cars, many buses. Not really this bike's natural habitat, is it? But is an environment like this kryptonite to a super bike that's as super as this one? Well, today I want to find out. I always say that if you buy a toy, then you should be able to use that toy wherever you want, whether it's driving for a corner at a racetrack or pop into your favorite corner shop. And this thing costs 20 grand, four and a half grand more than the standard model. So if it can't do both of those things, then just how super can this super bike really be? Okay, so first impressions, the seating position well, is quite aggressive. These things can make you feel like a tiny jockey sat on top of a really powerful horse. If you're coming from an adventure bike, then yeah, be warned, it can make you feel like a bit of an old man, this thing. You're gonna need quite good mobility and flexibility, especially in the old knees. But you know what? It's actually not the worst super sports bike I've ridden. The seat position's all right. There's not too much pressure on my knees, my back or my arms. This is actually quite a pleasant form of torture. Surprisingly, the suspension is quite forgiving. Obviously, it's adjustable, but the out-of-the-box setup is absolutely fine for everyday use. It's very compliant, so it's not a bike that bashes you constantly in the groin or destroys your wrists when you go over a bump. The biggest shock to the way this bike rides is how light it feels. I promise you, this is not an exaggeration. It feels a bit like a moped. The first time I rode this, I actually got a little bit caught out because at low speed, I almost dropped the thing because the lack of weight took me by surprise. It's incredible. And when you're on the move, it changes direction that like you wouldn't believe. I'm guessing this is going to be quite useful on some kind of chicane, but out here, you can dice in and out of traffic. It's like I'm riding a 20 grand Vespa. The engine is surprisingly good too. The 999cc inline four cylinder in this bike is really capable at low revs. It uses BMW's shift cam variable inlet timing, which allows strong torque at low RPM and ridiculous power when you're bouncing off the rev limiter. Final thing, it's got the best quick shifter in the game. It's basically automatic. You don't need the clutch. And when you want to lock into a specific speed without using the throttle, this thing's got cruise control. So the track monster is actually a pussycat. It's easy to ride, it's light, and it's even got one or two creature comforts. I say one or two, it's actually got loads. This might be a sports bike, but it's a BMW first and foremost, which means it's absolutely littered with gadgets. My favorite, definitely the heated grips. It's got three different levels of heating on the handlebars, so you can ride this thing year round without your hands falling off from getting too cold. The six and a half inch touchscreen is definitely worth talking about too. It is incredible. On most bikes, the screen is a bit of an afterthought, but they've thought long and hard about how to make this not only usable, but also beautiful. You can actually cycle through the various settings and menus using a strange little knob on the left handlebar that you move left or right and up and down in order to cycle through the various screens. You can change your settings, your various riding modes. There's a music player which connects to a compatible helmet or wireless earphones. It's even got a sat-nav, a sat-nav on a bike. And on top of that, it's even got a petrol gauge. Most bikes don't come with a petrol gauge. Why not? This does. Yet another reason to love it. All of this leads me to wonder if BMW has made some kind of mistake. It's so easy to live with, so easy to ride around town. Is this hardcore track monster actually any good when you ride it in anger? Yeah, this thing is more than good. It's phenomenal. I used to ride the old S1000RR. I had one for about six months and at the time it was the best bike I'd ever ridden. This thing though is so much better. The lightness that I talked about is great when you're around town, but it's insanely good when you're on some twisty roads and you open her up. It's three and a half kilograms lighter than the standard bike, but that's only half the story. These carbon wheels make it feel even lighter because you've got less unsprung mass. And the engine is glorious. 
peak power is 207 brake horsepower at 13 and a half thousand rpm and 113 newton meters of torque at 11,000 rpm and as you might expect acceleration can be terrifying wow oh my god the throttle response is tremendous as well every millimeter of twist adds or removes torque so you have an absurd amount of precision with your right hand you feel so connected to the bike the quick shifter is definitely one of my favorite things about this bike i mentioned it early but the execution here is just sublime a lot of bikes can feel a bit mushy like stepping on an old sponge but this feels slick mechanical and slicing up and down through the gears it's like a hot knife through butter obviously with over 200 horsepower on tap you'll need some good brakes and luckily the s1000 has a phenomenal set they're fantastically strong, but just as importantly, they provide great brake feel, so you always know exactly how much force to apply and how much stopping power to expect. The tank is bigger than I expected as well. It's 16 and a half liters, so it's quite bulbous, it's quite big, but that's actually a good thing because there's plenty for your thighs to grip onto when you're fighting that negative G under braking. On a bike like this, talent is of course very important, as is restraint. But if you don't have either, then the S1000RR still does its best to keep you out of trouble. It has traction control to stop the rear wheel spinning up, race ABS, slide control, wheelie control, launch control, dynamic brake control, and all manner of systems designed to flatter even a novice rider. Keep it in one of the basic riding modes, rain or road, and it behaves like a pussycat. But build your confidence and switch to dynamic or race and it becomes an absolute animal. Arguably one of the best super sports bikes money can buy. Oh my god, <laughs> I have got to get me one of these. This bike is off the charts, it's unbelievable. The S1000RR has massively surprised me. BMW has thrown everything, including the kitchen sink, in pursuit of making this the ultimate track bike. But we knew that. What I didn't expect was a bike that's so good, not just on the track, but frankly, everywhere. It's the ultimate track weapon, but also excels in environments like this. If you're looking for a super bike that shines in almost every department, they don't get much more super than this.